Perfect. Okay, so uh, good air. Good morning, everyone. Um, so as Phil mentioned, yeah, um, I'm going to take you through the software, but what I have done is um, I created a little script um, on, on how to do uh, a risk demo. So um, what I've done is up front is I've just put in some basic information of what high bond is, um, how risk bond, what is risk bond, and then what is strategy um, in the uh, getting quite, okay, Cabello is rebooting. Yeah, so so basically we need to understand before we actually get into the platform is that, um, and this is specific more for Alex, Rena, and so forth, um, is that Highbond is um, is a cloud-based solution. Um, within the solution, there's different apps um, in Highbond itself, and then so Highbond is 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 like a premium solution, and then you can get different components or compartments of Highbond, which, um, for example, in this scenario is uh, Riskbond. So so Riskbond is a product in the Highbond platform, and what Riskbond does is it's a risk management solution that helps organizations identify, assess respond and monitor enterprise risks. Okay, now within Respond, uh, there's another app which is called the strategy. And uh, strategy, what we use strategy for is to manage all the enterprise risks in the business. So um, when we say enterprise, those are the high level risks, the top 10, top 20 odd risks in an organization. And what we do with those strategic risks is we map them to the organizational strategic objectives. Now, there's a difference between strategy uh, managing enterprise risks and there's a difference between managing operational risk. So the purposes of this training is just to go through the entire strategy module. So if you wanted to do a quick overview and show a client what our solution is all about, then, then we're going to do this all in strategy, managing enterprise risks, right? So I have added everybody as a user uh, over the past few days. So if you've not activated, please activate your license. I'll just go into the user section um, to show that everyone has been invited. Um, you can see, uh, Di, if your email is not correct, please let me know. Um, and then, yeah, and Theo as well. Okay, so those are the two users that need to activate. Now. Within the Hybon platform, what we're going to look at is, is the strategy map, okay? And um, again, I'm going to keep referencing to this so that you, you understand how it all fits together. So it says when you open the strategy map um, app, the homepage displays of your company risk profile. So, so that's that particular screen. And then what I did is over and above that, I've marked each area and explained what each area does. So you've got your navigational areas, you've got the, the ad risks feature. So I'll switch back um, into the solution. So I've covered all these different areas. This is the treatment mechanisms. Um, that's where you can add risks, um, a strategic risk. And then your risk profile, that's the current view that you see. And so you'll see your risks are classified um, into different lanes. So we've got emerging, deferred, managing, monitoring, accepted. Now these areas can be fully modified or change the names. The names can be changed. You can call it treat, transfer, terminate, whatever works specific to you in your organization. Um, what I've also covered is you'll see there's a section called heat maps. Heat maps is just a reporting function. So it gives you the capability to generate your risk heat map as well as your strategy heat map. And then uh, we spoke about the strategy map as well, um, which I'll go into more detail as I go through it. So I've covered each and area, every area in, in this homepage. Um, the risk library, which talks about uh, a library full of populated risks and where you can actually download that. So back to the document, you'll see again, um, all these areas are covered. It explains everything in detail. So now I don't expect you to know every single feature, but it's good to just ide identify certain areas like this different tabs available, for example, risk profile, heat maps, what all those different areas do. Okay, so um, that's just on the front end. Um, the next step is um, what we're going to do is identify strategic objectives. So part of your demo process, your starting point will always be the strategy map. And, and it says here in your strategy map, you can model your business and legal entity structure to help assess your organization's strategic risks. So let's look at what that looks like. So starting point in the strategy map, when you click on the strategy map, you'll see what we've done is we've identified different entities. I've called it entities. 
Is someone trying to ask something? Okay. Lara, I'm just gonna mute you, right? Okay, so on the left-hand side, you'll see what I've done is I've identified entities. Now, entities, you can rename it, you can call it business areas, business processes, departments, business units, anything specific to what the organization you're demoing to. So on the left is all the entity structures. Up front, you'll see what I did is I created a regional structure. So you've got the area Johannesburg, uh, Cape Town. Then what I did is I broke it down further. I've called it HR as a business unit. And then based on those entities on the left, what we did is you've got to link them to your strategic objectives. Now, these are the objectives for the business itself. So every business will have a key list of strategic objectives of what they want to achieve. Um, and for example, for a year, one year period. Okay, so further down, you'll see I've up front, what we did is we just created different processes, but further down are actual strategic objectives that I've identified. So this map is really critical in, in identifying strategic risks or doing the enterprise risk assessments. And I'll show you why and how it all fits together. Okay, so that was the entity structure and then it explains exactly, click on the strategy map and explain below. In strategy, you can model your business and legal entity structure to help assess your organization's strategic risks. Define the behaviors the character and characterize the organization's core values and attitudes towards risk. And then I've got a screenshot which explains again where you need to click on, so on the strategy map. The next option is we have two features where you can add risks to the risk profile. So once you've built your strategy map, you then move on to the risk profile. Now in the risk profile, I mentioned there's two options of adding risks or identifying risks. The first one is you can either manually add your risks or the second option that we have is using the risk library. So what Galvanize have done is they've created a risk library it's populated all the different types of risks in different categories, as well as industry specific areas. So if somebody is looking for a risk in the banking and lending sector, you can then select which risks you might want to use part of your risk assessment, and you can then import those risks. Okay, so step one, strategy map. Step two, the way we're adding risks or identifying risks. The first one is manually adding. The second option Hi. is- AJ. Yes. Uh, back to the risk library, I see there's a COVID-19 something there. Um, is there something new that we've added into the library? Yeah, so what happened is uh, Galvanize have been building a whole COVID toolkit and the entire toolkit is uh, built into the system. So um, you can then go and use one of the COVID risks um, and bring that into the system itself. So you'll see there's my COVID-19 risk and um, you can start then linking it to different operational risk assessments. I'll show you in my in projects uh, on a separate call if you want on how we're managing that right now. Okay, cool. Cool. Great. So, yeah, so the two different options, risk library, as well as adding risks manually. Again, so I've specifically stated, click on the risk profile tab and explain the below. Click on the risk library and explain. The strategy app provides a common key risks disclosed across the given industry within its risk library. So once we've done the editing, and then again, you'll see the two different shots where I've explained. The next step is what we're doing is we're going to define the risk attributes. So I immediately said, click on the risk called cybersecurity and then click on the details tab. Okay, and the way you do that is you'll see the risk cybersecurity sitting under the managing area. And what you would do is click on cybersecurity and you would then click on the details tab. Okay, so before you start to explain that, you'll first go on to the details section. And in the details section, you can say to support a consistent risk taxonomy, you can define custom fields and capture different attributes. So looking at my risk under the details for cybersecurity, I categorize that risks, I put in different fields, any attributes specific to the client. Um, these can be configured, it's, it's a manual approach. So you'll see there's risk appetite, risk category, the cause of that risk, the impact on that risk, um, so you can build up multiple types of fields um, on that uh, risk itself, okay? And then once we've clicked on the risk attributes, it says you've got the explanation and then again, a screen grab to show you exactly what I've been talking about and so forth, okay? 
The next step is once we've done the identification of the risk, we classified the risk. The next step is we're going into assessing the risk itself. Okay. Now, when assessing a risk, so it will tell you, assessing a risk is the process in enterprise risk management that involves determining how much risk an organization faces. So we click on the assessment tab and we're going to explain the below. Now, what I did is in italics, I explained what an inherent risk is. So it says inherent risk is a calculation that derives from an assessment of an untreated risks. So what it means is inherent risk is a risk without any controls in place. Does everyone understand the difference between a risk and a control? Do you need me to further explain? Alex, Lara, Rina? I'm explain. Say that again? Yeah, I think you should explain. Okay, okay, okay. So when we talk risk management, um, Risk management basically is assessing or identifying risks in an organization. And, and once you've identified a risk, um, you need to actually mitigate that risk from occurring. So the way we classify a risk is a risk is, is a threat to an organization that prevents it from achieving its strategic objectives. Okay, um, so that's a risk classification. What a control is, a control is something that mitigates or reduced, reduces the impact of that risk occurring, impact and likelihood of that risk occurring. Now, when we identify risks, we usually rate a risk based on an impact and likelihood. The impact is, what is the impact if that risk occurs? All right, so you can rate it on a scale of a three point scale or a five point scale. So the impact of the risk occurring, as well as the likelihood of that risk occurring. Now, usually most common methodology that we use is a five by five matrix. And I'll show you how we do the assessment um, on rating that risk again. Okay, so you'll see under the assessment in, in the training, I said, go to your assessment tab, and then we're going to do the actual um, assessment of those risks. So we identified the risk, which is called cybersecurity. That's the threat to our organization, all right? Then we're going to rate it based on an impact and likelihood rating. So if you'll see, I've got impact and likelihood, and I'm using a five by five matrix um, in terms, so I've classified it. Number one is insignificant. That means the impact of this risk is insignificant. And number five is basically it's a catastrophic. The chances of it, the, the impact of this to our organization is really catastrophic. Okay, so that's the impact and likelihood rating. Now, there's two ways again of rating a risk. One is inherently, the other one is residually. Inherent is you've identified a risk and you're just assessing that risk without adding controls. So that's called your inherent risk rating. Residual risk rating is after you've added controls, now you rate the risk residually, okay? So the inherent risk rating will always be higher than the residual risk rating because you're always adding controls to mitigate that risk from occurring. Please tell me if that makes sense and do I need to explain further? Tom? Um, it makes sense, AJ. Okay, perfect. Are you asked me something, AJ? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Okay. All right, so that was where we assess inherent risk. So I've explained inherent risk is a calculation that derives from an assessment of an untreated risk. Untreated meaning no controls in place or the raw risk an organization phage faces if no controls or other mitigation factors have been put in place. Okay. And then again, it explains inherent risk um, Assessing inherent risk involves associating risks with strategic objectives defined in the strategy map and assessing risks across all operating segments or multiple risk scoring factors. Okay, so once you specify scores, strategy automatically calculates the inherent risk. Okay, so how do we do that and or manage that entire process? Cybersecurity is my risk. What we then do is we identify strategic objectives that are linked to that risk. Okay, so you'll see I created two objectives or I've linked two objectives to that specific risk, delivery operational SARS excellence and protect infrastructure and assets. Now these objectives are actually coming from my strategy map. So on the right hand side, those were the objectives that we identified. And when I linked that strategic risk to an objective, you'll see what it does is it's that objective in turn is linked to an entity. 
okay? So you'll see the delivery operational size excellence is linked to product delivery and operations. Okay, so let's go back to the risk and show you what that looks like when we look at cybersecurity. Okay, so delivery operational size excellence, that was linked to product delivery and operations. And the second objective, protect infrastructure and assets, was linked to the entity called information technology. So what this means is I've got one risk that I've identified. That risk is now sitting in two different entities of my business. I can now rate that risk on each entity. So what that means is each entity will have its own individual rating based on your impact and likelihood. Okay, so you'll see I've rated it as a five by five. And what the system does, it takes your impact times your likelihood and gives you your risk score. So that risk is my inherent risk score without adding controls in place. Okay, we also have additional risk scoring factors. So you'll see and it's called velocity. Risk scoring factors just allows you to, if you're more in a mature or advanced uh, risk assessment environment, um, you can start using factors. So factors such as threat, velocity. Velocity means the speed of that risk occurring or how fast can it actually occur um, in the business. So we use product delivery and operations. My risk is high but then I said this risk can occur in, in the next one to three months. What the system does, it takes my impact times my likelihood times my velocity and gives me a risk score. Now, what this, what this shows me here is one risk, two entities, each entity has its own individual rating. Looking at IT, my risk is sitting at 25, but looking at product delivery, it's sitting at 37.5. That shows the risk in product delivery is quite, is higher than IT basically. My scores get aggregated and it gives me a total aggregated score. And then what the system then does is it calculates your inherent risk heat. So we spoke earlier about managing or assessing your impact times your likelihood, which gives you your inherent risk score. However, what Galvanize or Highborn does, it calculates your inherent risk in a percentage form. The percentage shows you how critical that risk is in your organization. So 16.7%, the higher the percentage, the, the less your controls are working, um, and basically that risk, the, or the chances of it occurring are higher, okay? So- Hey, I got a question. Yes, Mike. Yeah, uh, back to the screen. Yeah. So I don't see how the velocity under the IT entity is contributing to that final calculation. Is there a reason why? So if you look at IT, so it like is it is it is adding right. It's it's basically your impact your five by five is twenty five. Yeah. So how's the velocity? Oh, for under for under IT. So what we've done yeah. is, yeah, Mike, you're going a bit advanced here, but um, what we've done is under scoring, you'll see we added different percentages for velocity, so you can edit different weightings on each one of them. So you'll see, um, I've used the three point and we used, which one was it? The two to four quarters? Or was it the one to two years? Yeah. Yeah, so it, it just multiplies that. I think so it it's just two to four quarters. Yeah. So it just multiplies that uh, by that. Okay, by that so score. it's all in the back end. Yes, it's all in the back end, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Great, so this is the assessing part where 3.1 explains how we assess the inherent risk rating. So it explains step-by-step step again, what you need to click on um, and so forth. So once we've done our inherent risk rating where we get our scores and you'll see your inherent risk score is calculated in a percentage form. The next step, uh, uh, Leslie would like to make a comment about velocity. Leslie, go ahead. Yeah, so Velocity, a lot of our customers were confused about it, weren't using it previously. Um, but with this whole COVID-19 crisis, a lot of people are starting to ask about this because uh, not only did it hit us quickly, a lot of um, other factors are hitting us in the next quarter, in the next few months. And so people are starting to understand why it's so important to have this uh, particular rating factor. Great, cool. Okay, so inherent risk is rated. The next step is we're going to add risk treatment. Now remember we said risk treatment is 
inherently is, is before controls, risk treatment is we're gonna add different treatment mechanisms. Now this is where it becomes slightly tricky in our solution. So first let's just explain what a risk treatment is. Risk treatment are measures an organization takes to mitigate the risk. Measures may include initiatives, programs, policies, or control objectives, which you can create in risk assessments. And then in brackets, I put their projects okay and link them to our strategic risks the linkage helps you to ensure complete coverage of all your operational risks identified during annual risk assessments so what it's actually saying in that statement is that we have calculated our risk inherently now the way strategic or enterprise risk works in the strategy module is there is no feature to add controls so you cannot go and add a control to actually mitigate this risk. The way we add controls is by creating a treatment. A treatment are the projects that are sitting at the operational level. Now, when I say projects sitting at the operational level, if you look at Highbond, you'll see the mod app that we're working in right now is called Strategy. And the operational risks are all sitting in projects. So if I open my projects, you'll see we've created different internal audit projects. There's different operational risk assessments. I'll just wait for the screen to load. Now, this is a list of all your different projects that you have listed out there. So what we're saying is, you cannot add a risk, a control in the strategy app, but what we do it is we link that strategic risk to the operational processes where all the controls are setting. And what that then does is it rolls up and gives you your residual. Okay. Now, step by step, how do we do that? For example, all you'll do is click on the edit treatment links. And when you click on the edit treatment links, you'll see what the system will do will bring an entire list of all the projects there. So for example, if I were going to link this risk to an accounts payable audit, as an example, I can determine which processes or which objectives I'm going to link it to. If I selected discounts, everything under discounts, all the controls that are sitting there is what we're saying is going to help mitigate this risk from taking place. So what that does is when I create my treatment link, it will then, I'll just click on cancel, it will then bring my different entities. Now looking at our example, I'll click on treatment links again and I'll just show you which areas we've actually linked it to. Number one is I've linked it to a framework and in my framework, I've called it IT cybersecurity compliance and I linked it to all the processes, all right? Step two I've done is I've also linked it to a project and if I go further down, you'll see a project called COVID monitoring. Okay, in COVID monitoring, all I did is as I linked it to that process called system access management. So once we create the link, what happens in the system is we can start basically adding a treatment percentage, which will equivalent to the residual risk score. Okay, so the inherent risk is then reduced by adding a treatment percentage. So you'll see what I did is I added different percentages. Now, obviously, this is not something that can be calculated. You'll have to put in a percentage and assume what you think the, the percentages are. So some areas have percentages, some don't. Okay, for your demo purposes, I don't think you need to go into the complexity of why you're adding a percentage and so forth. All we're saying is you need to make sure the client understands that you've got your inherent risk rate the way we calculate residual is by adding a treatment. The treatment is the projects that are sitting at the operational level. And what that then does is it calculates your residual risk score. Make sense, everyone? Okay, cool. Okay, so you'll see 3.2 explains how we link a risk for risk treatment, how I've linked it to different uh, projects that are sitting at the operational level. You're adding your treatment percentage. So it shows you after assessing inherent risk, you can define how the risk treatment is. Um, Bunny, um, okay. Can I address that just now to you uh, as soon as I go through this? Okay, so that's where we, the next step was residual risk rating and it explains again, assessing residual risk involves specifying a treatment percentage to define how much of the treatment reduces the inherent risk. The treatment percentage is based on the expected effectiveness of treatment efforts in place. 
okay? So that was residual risk. And then you'll see I explained, it shows you, it highlights the area where you add your treatment percentages, and then also residual risk gets calculated, okay? Now, once you've done your, your, your ratings, basically, so we've assessed risk inherently, um, we've added controls or treatment areas, which then calculated our residual risk score. And what the system then also does is it starts to calculate your overall assurance. Your overall assurance is whether those controls are actually operating effectively. So if you click on the I button of the overall assurance, it would show you the assurance is an expression of confidence that the risk is effectively mitigated. That means our assurance score is sitting at 62.3%, which is not bad. The controls are working and we seem to be okay from a cybersecurity risk itself. It also would show you further down the different treatment areas that you've linked it to. And it will also show you the assurance scores of each of those treatment areas. And that then rolls up basically and gives you your overall assurance score. Okay, so for demo purposes, all you need to do is talk about, click on assurance, show that the system then calculates your overall assurance, shows you which treatment areas you've linked it to, and the assurance scores on those treatment areas, which then rolls up to give you that assurance score. Okay? Okay. So that's just the basics of managing, identifying risks, assessing risks, adding them to your strategic objectives, inherently rating those risks, residually getting a residual score. And we move to almost the last step, which we are starting to report and monitor risks. So um, you'll see I covered that assurance. So how do we monitor that risk? It shows you what the overall assurance score is. And I have explained the assurance is a calculation based in the risk assessment that can be rolled up to strategy with the final result that is represented by value. Okay. Okay. The 4.2, we also have a feature where we can integrate data to monitor risks. Now, from, from a selling perspective, that is one of our key strengths. We've got the ability to integrate data from analytics directly into our Highborn platform and use that data to actually automate the risk assessment process. Okay. Okay. So if we go further down into integrate data, I've said what you need to do is click on a metric. So part of that process that you're selling. So I'm, I'm sure you're going to be familiar with analytics and how analytics works. And like I said, what we've done is we've created that ability to bring data directly into our risk assessment process. Now, how does this data actually come into, uh, for example, a metric? Um, the way it works is you've got an analytic and analytic will go in and grab a whole lot of data from your different systems, whether it be an ERP system or whatever. That data, once you run that script, the data gets then fed into our results module. In our results module, that's where we then start building up KRIs and KPIs. KRI is a key risk indicator. KPI is a key performance indicator. Now, you don't need to go into the complexities of that, but just explaining to the client that from analytics, data then gets fed directly into results. And from results, we then link that to our strategic risk assessment. And that's where you can then click on the metric feature and you can explain this is how data comes in um, with the use of KRIs and KPIs. Now the, the KRI that we're going to use is the monthly count of unauthorized system access. So right now we're sitting on 87. That means there's been 87 exceptions where user, users have had unauthorized access uh, system access based on the cybersecurity risk that we, we identified. Okay, and you'll see there, this is how we bring the data in. And once the data comes in, you have the capability then to automate. So I'm not going to show you the back end of how we automate, but from your perspective, you can just explain to the client that we have the capability to use data to drive the risk assessment process, to automate the risk assessment process. So we had a metric and we spoke about data, the metric that came in and under assessment, you'll see um, under the, the, the cybersecurity risk for product delivery and operations, you'll see I have a small circle under impact. And what this actually means is that the scoring of this impact value is actually automated. It's based on the data that's coming into results. From there, we're setting up KRIs, and that KRI basically automates that risk assessment process for us. 
Okay, so that's one of the key key features um, in the system um, that you you would like to to speak to a client about. Any questions on the automation part? Do you understand it? Is there? Are you not familiar with what I just said? Okay, great. So if we move on from automating the risk assessment process, then the last feature that, that you need to go through and, and demo to the client is the different types of reports or outputs that we do have. So I've explained if you're on the metric, you click on the X to close the page, then you go back to the homepage tab. And then on the top right under risk heat map, you click on risk heat map and you explain what the risk heat map does. So it says in strategy, you can create a comprehensive and configurable risk heat map to share with management and the board, which can be quickly consumed and acted on. Once created, risk heat maps can be exported and shared electronically, okay? So for your purposes, all you're doing is you close that risk and on the top right, you click on the risk heat map and you click on risk heat map. So basically this shows you a heat map and you can explain. If you were, were, were having a chat with somebody that's in risk, they would fully understand um, what a risk heat map is. Now looking at this is, you can see my number one risk in my organization right now is the COVID-19 pandemic. Cybersecurity is sitting at number three, that's the, the risk that you went through and did your entire demo on. Okay, so that's one option of generating reports. Um, we also in there I stated that you can download this and it's this is a real time dashboard that you can use to show to clients. Okay, within this dashboard, you also have different filter options. So I've explained as well that you can filter your risks on different features, different environments and so forth, but you don't need to get into such detail for that. You just need to show the heat map, explain that this heat map is an interactive report and it basically shows you what your top key risks are. Okay, so if you're doing enterprise risks, your key objective is to, to show basically the top 10 odd risks, top 20 odd risks in an organization. And then the second report that you would show is uh, the strategy heat map. And what the strategy heat map basically does, it shows you, you know, all those entities that we link to strategic objectives, it breaks it down. So on the top, it shows you your entities. On the right, it shows me my strategic objectives. And looking at this, I can immediately tell where my key strategic risks are sitting. So if I looked at Cape Town Computer Operations, if I clicked on that, it would show you basically that which risks are sitting in those different areas. Now, what these maps do basically is, which in our next session, which we will cover, is the internal audit process. Looking at these heat maps, it immediately gives us an indication of which areas we would want to consider to audit, okay? And that's how the audit process comes into play. So it's risk-based auditing. So you look at your high-risk areas, you choose those areas that you're going to audit, and then you start the entire audit process, okay? So those were the two, two basic reports that come out of the system. So that was the entire demo. It's just a high level. I don't expect you to go into a lot of detail when you're speaking to the client, but just try and understand all these different steps that we're following, identifying, assessing, inherent, residual, impact, likelihood, um, and then reporting on those risks. Um, it's a high level overview of what the system looks like. Any questions? Thank you, AJ. That was really great. Okay, great. Anyone else? Uh, thanks, AJ. Don't you think uh, risk workshops would be a good one to talk about? So, so yeah, Mike, I, I have thought about it, but um, it just goes into too much detail. So this is more from a sales development, like for Alex, um, when they just get an introduction with a client and the client says, can we just see basically what it's all about? Then, then this is the aim. Risk workshops and it go into very detail. But as you become more advanced, um, we can cover those areas. Uh, Jacob sends a question. Jacob, please talk about the time machine as we can see the COVID-19. So yeah, the time machine basically, Jacob. Um, Hold on a sec, AJ. Uh, guys, can you please mute if you're not speaking? There's an echo. Okay. 
So Jacob, the time machine is, is a really great feature also. So if, you, if you're familiar with strategy and if you've already been playing with it, um, the time machine works really well. So uh, for example, if I'm in my um, heat maps area and I can see COVID-19 right now is my, my number one strategic risk. What the time machine allows you to do is go back in time and it allows you to show you what were your key risks then. So um, if I went to, for example, the 1st of February, 2020, um, what the time machine then will do, it will show me my risk information as at that point in time. So looking at this, you can immediately see um, at that point in time, IT risk was my number one risk. And then you can download these two reports and then put them side by side um, to show you the different trends um, that are happening in an organization. Okay, Jacob, I hope that answers your question. Anyone else? So does everyone feel that they could do a brief demo following AJ's guide? I have to practice. <laughs> yeah, that's, can you practice? But in, uh, you know, one, in any context, whether it's in sales development, account management, uh, account development, customer success, we need to be able to talk with a level of intimacy of knowledge about this stuff. And I find the only way is going to be able to do this. So I'm glad everyone agreed to that in the main part of their silence because AJ is going to be setting up 30 minute demos uh, towards the end of next week so that everybody can come back and do a brief demo to him based on that, that uh, what he's just shown. So it's literally 15 minutes that you need to be able to demo for um, and uh, literally just follow this. Say what it says, do what it says, and then theoretically, even if you're not in front of the software, you'll have the ability to have that conversation. Now, you wish you were paying attention. Okay, cool. Any last questions from anyone?